Hello, this is Talon with the old guy stuff on Busy Corner Lane. And we're going to be doing a um, one year review of the Ofo Works SG1 OD knife that was picked up by one of my family members in Japan and given to me as a gift. Okay, uh, first of all, the price on this is 6,600 yen. Oh my gosh, it sounds like a lot. Um, that's basically about $66. Depends on the exchange rate from um, U.S. currency to Japanese currency. The overall weight with the sheath and knife in the sheath is five and three quarters ounces, so it is very lightweight. Without the sheath, the weight is four and a half ounces. Now the length, and we have a little bit of parallax error here. Uh, that is just based on the fact of the camera position. But with the sheath, the length is nine and a half inches. Without the sheath, the length is nine and a quarter inches. If you look at the length uh, where the spine meets the handle, that is four inches. And if you look at the part where the blade side of it um, meets the handle, we're at four and a quarter inches. So legality uh, based on length is going to depend on how they interpret that in your area. Where I live, uh, there is no length limitation. You just can't have a dirk or a stiletto. That's the only thing that they're saying you can't have here. Okay, where you live, you might need to check those. I check mine quite regularly. Okay, we're going to show uh, this, the spine making sparks. And it's starting to fire. The cotton ball has no Vaseline on it, so it's only going to burn about 30 seconds maximum. With Vaseline, it'll burn for a solid 10 minutes. If I put Vaseline on this cotton ball, it's going to burn a solid 10 minutes. Since I didn't put Vaseline on this cotton ball, it's only going to burn about 30 seconds. Note, I just but said that. The spine on this blade makes really good sparks. Okay, so let's first talk about this sheath, okay? Uh, I have used this knife several hundred times since I got it. And the retention on the sheath is still so solid that you can you can feel it actually uh, disengage from the sheath and you can hear it click in when you're putting it back in that's pretty solid that is very solid I've, I've never had a problem with this one to come out of its own okay? now I'm not going to tell you all the great things this knife can do Seriously, I give this knife about a 9 out of 10. I mean, so you should skip to the end, you know. Uh, I give it about a 9 out of 10. I'm not going to tell you all the great things it does, like food processing and stuff like this, because this knife excels, excels at peeling, skinning, slicing, with whether it's uh, fruit, a vegetable, meat, things like that. So um, I'm not going to show all that, but just take my word for it, this thing works great and it's stellar for that okay um but i'm going to show you some limitations on this and i could not read the instructions that came with the knife it does come with like a little um pamphlet type deal but it's all written in uh kanji which is one of the japanese languages uh but they had a few diagrams and one of the diagrams say basically don't stick it in um to a piece of wood and try to drill a hole in it by twisting it okay so, seriously, I've messed up a knife blade doing that before, back in 1979. So, I learned my lesson on that one. I had to go get the knife blade actually ground back down so that it would be, you know, not look like I was an idiot with it. Okay? But, you know, kids do dumb things sometimes, so they're adults. Okay? Um, also, you don't pry with it, so don't like stick it into a piece of wood and say, oh, I'm going to pry this. I don't know why you would, but just don't do it, okay? And uh, the other diagram basically says don't baton. Now, this is, I don't know what kind of wood this is, but this is some extremely hard wood stuff, okay? Um, don't baton through. 
And let me tell you some basics of what happens with this. This wood is um, about three, three and a half inches in diameter, okay? I can really slam the heck out of that wood with this whacker that I made, all right? Um, but if I manage to get it this deep into the wood, where I'm not actually able to hit the spine anymore and I didn't destroy the knife in the process of doing it. Now the only place I can hit this knife is gonna be up here on the tip, which is never a good idea, in my opinion, or in the handle, and I don't think it's a good idea either. Okay, so if you gotta go through uh, wood, especially a hardwood, uh, my recommendation, use an ax, okay? I can just take this wood right here and hit it one time and it's split, okay? In fact, I tried earlier on this thinner piece of wood and this knife, it actually got stuck in a, um, in a knot. But this knife, I'm not gonna risk hitting it so hard that it goes good into the wood, but I managed to get a wedge into the wood and it broke the wedge, okay? Uh, but if you gotta go into a piece of wood and you can get it maybe about a centimeter deep or a quarter inch, um, then I recommend going the wedge route. I have to re-grind this down or re-whittle re it down. But go the wedge route and use the wedge for that. Okay? This is not going to do a good job with that. However, where you could do a good job is take off corners. So on this, I might start right in here and cut down, okay? And if, I, if I'm doing really good with the grain of the wood, then I ought to be able to get a pretty good straight cut like I did with some of these pieces before, okay? So if you're gonna do that, then I recommend you go in like this because there's some cases where the ax is just too much, okay? The ax is just too much and I've seen somebody injure themselves extremely bad out in the wood using an ax uh, when a knife would have been better, okay? So I might take this and go down in the corner here. I'm gonna use this kind of very lightweight one, which is a different wood. And I'm just gonna go in here like this, right? And I'm just getting some thin pieces because maybe, just maybe, I want to have some small stuff to stick in to my fire right after it's starting up so that I can, you know, build the fire up, okay? But I would never want to take this knife and go through the middle of the wood because I'm probably going to damage the blade doing it, and I don't want to take that chance, okay? I always bring more than one blade with me, but if I break this and I've only got one more blade, then I've only got one blade with me. So, you know, I want to take care of my tools when I'm, when I'm out in the woods. Okay, that side, this is back in my sheath, got this aside, all right, so once I get down to something like this though, hey, feather sticks and fuzz sticks are really easy, in fact, I did some on this one a little while ago, just playing around, so I can take this, and use the, the spine is sharp enough that it makes good sparks with the ferro rod, okay? And I can get a lot of good fuzz, drop it right there. I can get a lot of good fuzz parts right in there, okay? Just be patient when you do it, you know? Don't like try to force yourself. If I wanna use some feathers, I can do that. But if I'm at this point right here, and it's this thin, I may want to just do this. Again, this would be uh, too small to, to want to use an axe in my opinion, but I can do this right here and I can get another one that I can do some fuzz with or some feathers, okay? Or I could choose to want to go through it a little bit more and go for thinner. See, this knife excels with this, but if I'm trying to go through something bigger, even this, and this is a hardwood, I don't know what kind it is, but this, this stuff is pretty solid, okay? Um, this is not the knife to do it with. 
I've got a, I've got a lot of good discount knives for like five dollars at places like Ross and, and things like that um, that I could baton the snot out of with this whacker right here. This is about five pounds. I can baton the snot out of those knives, and I haven't broke them yet. But this blade is about half the thickness of the others, so you don't want to take that chance. You really don't want to take that chance. Now, overall, like I said, I would give this blade, this knife a 9 out of 10, okay? A 9 out of 10. The only reason not a 10 out of 10 is even though this is 4 inches long and 3 and a half inches across, if I needed to in an emergency case, I could not baton through this good. This knife, I've done it before, will get stuck once it gets this deep, and it is hard as heck to get out. I had to take a saw and cut through it about right in here, which was a pain in the behind. And then at that point, I'm able to just push it down and get it out of the wood. But once it gets like this in the wood like this, um, this is so acute on the angle and the uh, and the smoothness of the blade that it becomes stuck. So that's why it's not a 10 out of a 10. Otherwise, this knife's a 10 out of 10. If you're gonna go food prep, hey, this is probably one of the best knives I've ever found for that. Um, there are some great knives for a food prep, but this one's very solid in that in that regard. So this is Talon with old guy stuff on busy corner lane. Have a safe, happy, peaceful, wonderful day and Goodbye.